Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream. And I got to tell you, I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at. I still say we're in the right place at the right time. So today's a great day. And uh, this started on Sunday, actually, after hours. And uh, we had quite a bit of a pump. And this pump is continuing. Now, uh, there are many reasons for these pumps. I don't really get into why or the hows. I just want to talk about where we're at right now and I think where we're going. Right now, we're at almost two and a half trillion market cap. Pretty great. And Bitcoin, this is, what I, this is what I like about the crypto space, because if you're in traditional equities, which is fine, I am, I, I am as well, or if you're in precious metals, I am as well, or r real estate, whatever you're into, it's very tough to get a uh, revenue or some types of gains over seven days of like, you know, 10%, 15%, even 20%. And that's what's possible here in digital assets, because I think right now we are heavily undervalued. And Bitcoin over seven days is up almost 13%. Ethereum, almost 14%. BNB, 14%. Solana, almost 13%. Uh, XRP, 25%. <laughs> Watch out. I thought that was a stable coin, but I guess not. Dogecoin, 12%. Cardano, up 20%. I, I mean, I don't have to go over this. You already know. You've been watching your portfolio grow. And it's amazing to me. Like, all you had to do, all you had to do, essentially, over the last seven days was not panic and just keep buying. That's what's great about this, this whole sector. But where every good part, there is a bad part, and that's called liquidations. And I'm sorry to say, and I don't really care either way what you individually do, because you're outside of my realm of control. And of course, if you want to go long or go short, that's great. I mean, do what you want to do. But right now, 24 hours, uh, as far as like who got wrecked, we're looking at almost 160 million, which I got to tell you, like, there was a whole article about who got wrecked. I'm like, I really don't care. But there was one thing that I, I will note. If we go down here, this is on CoinGlass. And in the green are the longs that get liquidated. In the red, of course, are the shorts that get liquidated. And if you just take a look at a, just zoom out. Let's just zoom out. Since January, who was the one that got liquidated the most? I mean, really, if you take a look at it. When I take a look at this, who got liquidated the most was the longs. The shorts, yeah, they got liquidated. It was it was pretty harsh, you know, around like February. And this is after the uh, spot ETF was really taking off and, you know, they got crushed. And over here, there was a big reversal. But all in all, I mean, if you were going, if you were going long, it kind of actually hurt. So, I mean, if you want to do that and go out that route, God bless you. Good for you. That's just not in my DNA. And uh, I will just say that, uh, today's are those days where I'm glad I don't do those things. But uh, of course, you're do whatever you want to do. So today, what I want to bring to you again, I'm feeling pretty good, feeling bullish. So let's, let's get into why. And it really comes down to this has been making the rounds on on X or Twitter. And I have to also have to tell you that if you're going to the mainstream media or the traditional media outlets, I don't see why you do that. Because if you just go to X, you can pick up a heck of a lot more alpha and way better information. And of course, because of community notes, you can get the actual real facts faster than what traditional media is, is giving out there. If you want to follow me on X and a couple of, uh, of uh, other people, there's a link in the description. And this is great. This is Larry Fink, uh, of course, head of BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the entire planet. And pretty much what he's saying of, and he, I think, single-handedly, the group itself was responsible for the spot Bitcoin ETF. People will say, well, it was the Biden administration. <laughs> sure. It was BlackRock. And uh, I like this for the first two minutes or so. He's going to talk about, you know, why he got into it and where he was wrong. And I have to appreciate people who say they're wrong. Remember when people said they were wrong? I know it's crazy. People actually used to do that. And here he says it again. So I like to see what, what he's saying here. And then pay attention to him and pay attention to Good old Jimmy Kramer, as he pretty much lies out of his teeth. Anyhow, I want you to take a listen to this. I'm going to make sure that you have it as a perfect audio so you can hear this crisp and clear. So just take a listen to what Larry's got to say. It's about two and a half minutes or so. Good stuff. Now, I, I know uh, you have been a leader in willing to embrace crypto. You yeah. have made it so that people can be in Bitcoin. We hear that you are thinking about Ethereum. These are incredible things. How, now, BlackRock is not known as a uh, 
a gunslinger by any means. So you obviously must believe that this may be as an alternative. Is this an alternative uh, in order to be able, because of the a deficit, maybe something long term people should have? Absolutely. Um, as you know, I was a skeptic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, you know, I was a proud skeptic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I studied it, learned about it, and I came away saying, okay, you know, my opinion five years ago was wrong. Here's my opinion today. This is what I believe in today. I believe the opportunity today. I believe Bitcoin is legitimate. I'm not trying to say there's not misuses like everything else, but it is a legitimate financial instrument that allows you to have maybe uncorrelated, non-correlated type of returns. I believe it is an instrument that you invest in when you're more frightened, though. It is an instrument when you believe that co countries are debasing their currency, de debasing their currency by excess deficits, and some countries are. I believe we have um, countries where you're frightened of your everyday existence and have an opportunity to invest in, in a, a something that is outside your country's uh, you know, control, then you can have more financial control. And so I'm a, a major believer that there is a role for Bitcoin in, in portfolios. I believe you're going to see that as, an, as one of the asset classes that we all look at. I look at it as digital gold, as I said before, and I do believe there's a, a there's a there's a real need for everyone to look at it as as one alternative to I would say the optimism that I have in the world. If you want to hedge hope, Bitcoin is not a an instrument for hope unless you're hopeful you're gonna make a lot of money on it. <laughs> but it, I, I look at it as a vehicle in which you're expressing your your financial acumen in something that you're more frightened of the world, you're more frightened of your existence. And I believe there's a great industrial use for it. And I, and I think a lot of people are missing that. I couldn't agree more. I changed my mind about it when you did. <laughs> you admitted my thinking. It was like, uh-uh, you don't believe it. So I can't believe it. I want to thank Larry Fink for the message of optimism. Thanks. And also for a great quarter. Uh, first of all, I like Larry Fink. I mean, I like Larry Fink because he's pumping my bags. I mean, let's just be honest. That's why we like Larry Fink, and that's just the truth. But Jimmy Kramer, uh, probably I shouldn't get into it, but didn't that seem like a lie? Because Jimmy Kramer has been pretty much negative on Bitcoin, saying it's never going to rebound. It's really topped out. And, of course, he was big on it in 2021, and he sold it for his house, and all of a sudden he's been very negative. Then all of a sudden he's like, yeah, I changed my mind too. Eh, maybe maybe there's, there's a nuance there. It doesn't matter. What matters is that Larry Fink came out on live TV and said, look, this is why Bitcoin is so great. And this is why people should get into it. And of course, it just carries a certain gravitas, a certain weight when somebody comes out there, the largest asset manager and goes, look, you need to listen up. And there's a reason why there is people in other countries, they are hurting. There are also the governments which are debasing their currency. And if you don't understand what that is, you need to get on board. And I could not agree more. There is a great website. It's called the usdebtclock.org. And you can take a look at this and just see how things are spinning. Now, this is great. It's fun. And it's, you know, very good for like scare tactic, tactics and things like that. We're in massive debt. That's what Americans do. We, you know, we get overweight. And we're super obese uh, in some places. And uh, we like to print money and go into debt. That's what it is. And also, as a reminder, it's not just we're going into debt and we're like kind of slowing down. Every 100 days, we add a trillion dollars to the national deficit. So uh, America's doing fantastic. And again, this is why we are so bullish on Bitcoin. Talk to any of your normie friends and ask them, hey, what's inflation? Do you know how that works? Do you know how much debt we're in? And do you know how much that is actually per individual? And actually, do you know how much that is per taxpayer? Just real quick, I, I forgot to say this. The debt per citizen is $103,000. That's every man, woman, and child in the United States. The debt per taxpayer is a quarter of a million dollars. We will never, ever get out of this unless, of course, we go to World War III. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. That's where we're at. And I would just say, lastly, and I wanted to bring this up, I put in there, if you're having problems discussing with your friends, like why Bitcoin, things like that, there was a great uh, post from Crypto T. And she came out and said, hey, like, uh, I have some information on Bitcoin. She's a big believer into it, and she's a great uh, account to actual follow. But she says, 
I talked to a developer for a bank and I asked him about Bitcoin. He said, the idea of losing all your money from a hack or a corrupted hard drive is not worth the risk. I said, that's why you don't store your keys on a computer. He said, so this is the future of digital tech and you want me to use a pen and paper? And she said, this really stopped me in my tracks. So I did a whole presentation of like why Bitcoin is good. Now, this is from Dr. Jeff Booth. And he just said, look, if you don't hold Bitcoin, your prices are gonna go up. That's really what it comes down to. We know, all know this one, right? 1980, 20 bucks could buy you a cart full of groceries, 21 dude couldn't buy a squat. And of course, if we take a look at just like house prices, and this is just the monetary issue, but I linked the for, for this piece where you can talk about like why this actually works, the people that are actually fudding it and why they're fudding it, and of course, just how wrong they've been over time for your positions and everything that you wanna know about as far as like, well, what about the electricity genius? And what about actually using in other countries? And what about the big bankers and what, what their views are? And you can just go through this and explain to people just how simple this actually is and go from there. So anyhow, let me just think about that. I can go over that in detail later, but let's just move on. Two, some more good news. Now, on this channel, I don't like to give everybody like severe case of hopium, because I think there should be balance. But right now, I mean, we've had our teeth kicked in for quite some time. I think we should run with it, right? A little hopium and more hopium might be a little bit good. I'm not saying everything's going to the moon, but look, there's some people buying. This is an article by Cointelegraph. Bitcoin whale stapped up 4.3 billion of Bitcoin amid price slump. And I, I found it interesting that this was just about the biggest 30-day period since April 2023. It's over a year ago shortly after several local banks in the US collapsed. This would go back to what Larry Fink was talking about, collapsing, there's an asset that could control, that can actually help you out as everything gets debased and things around you are falling apart. When these banks collapsed, there was a huge amount of accumulation of Bitcoin because people said, this is the flight to safety, another quote from Larry Fink. And we can see down here, the, liquid, the liquidity inventory, all exchanges and Grayscale, and demand from accumulation addresses are quite high. Now, if you take a look at this, you're like, that's great, Rob, but why, is, why aren't we at 70,000 right now or 80,000? Well, for everybody that says that this is great and it's going to the moon, you have to understand, there's still gonna be people out there that take profits. There's still gonna be bots out there that automatically trade. There's still gonna be people out there that are gonna be on leverage and kind of screw things up in the market and just gonna take time. To me personally, this is the best time to be here. And I still say we should be accumulating. Now, I can't tell you what to do. This isn't financial advice. But if you take a look at just some basic stuff, like market value versus realized value and the Z-score to kind of get out of the noise, we're not even close to being overheated. This is 2021. This is 2017. This is 2013. We are way down here. If we take a look at the like one of my favorite ones, bicycle cycle tops, uh, we're actually moving farther apart and when this crosses over, this is when you actually want to think about selling. Right now, we're moving in the opposite direction. And even though we're at, what, 62, 63,000, it's still a good time. And lastly, before we get into the Q&A, if you just look at the risk factors, because you want to ask yourself, well, where the hell are we going, right? What, what is going on? Where could this all end up to? This is why I like using Ben's site. In the cryptoverse, I like to use these key risk metrics. And if you just note, just right here, we're like in the middle. It goes from zero to 1.0. We're at only 0 0.5, which is around 63,000. Wow, 63,000, that's true. Oh yeah, look at that. So if we extrapolate that and say, well, okay, well, what is a good time to, you know, to accumulate? Maybe this would be a good time for you. I don't know. I don't know your, your, your situation right now. But if you just take a look at the risk bands, you know at 0.7, from 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 is 72,000. That would almost hit our all-time highs. 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, 91,000. 0 0.8, 113,000. 0 0.9, 137,000. If we top out at one, that's 164,000. Now, that's a price prediction and ours are worthless, but I'm just telling you, if you take a look at these uh, risk factors, time and risk bands, it's looking pretty good and I, Cannot be happier with where we're at right now. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. When we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you want to stick around, we're going to do a little Q and A. I see there's a 
bunch of questions I need to answer. Uh, but if not, take off. Enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate you coming by. I really do.